book two chapters twenty two through twenty four of the consoling thoughts of saint francis de sales by jean joseph Huguet. this librivox recording is in the public domain book two consoling thoughts on trials of an interior life infirmities of soul and body chapter twenty two joys in sufferings let us cast ourselves at the foot of the crucifix and consider the pains in comparison with the cross and the injuries which our lord endured by this means the heaviness of our afflictions will appear light and little and sometimes so agreeable that we shall far prefer suffering to the enjoyment of any other consolation separated from suffering alas when we see our saviour after a thousand opprobriums crucified and dead amid thorns and nails and near him our lady and saint john in the midst of the wonderful and terrible darkness that happened during his passion we should say that without a doubt crosses and afflictions are more amiable than contentments and delights inasmuch as the wisdom of god chose them for himself and for his truest and most beloved servants ah how good a grace it ought to be for us to be a little crucified with our lord and to be able to testify our love towards him in the midst of tribulations as he testified his love towards us during his passion the remedies prescribed by physicians and the medicines presented by apothecaries are often rejected by the sick but being offered by some beloved hand love overcomes horror and they are received with joy here is a little sick child that without seeing its mother and merely from the knowledge it has of her will takes everything brought to it and uses food without any pleasure for it has no pleasure in eating nor has it the contentment of seeing its mother but it eats and drinks simply to do her will my god why in like manner does not the good pleasure of our lord make bitterness amiable pain delightful and agony desirable to us when god seems to be gratified with it mystic bees make their most excellent honey in the wounds of the lion of the tribe of judah slaughtered rent and torn in pieces on mount calvary and the children of the cross glory in their admirable riddle which the world cannot understand from death which devours all comes forth the meat of our consolation and from death stronger than all comes forth the sweetness of the honey of our love let us then unite our pains with the torments of jesus christ that the former may be enriched by the value and merit of the latter and let us believe that our sufferings can never either in quantity or in quality be compared with those of our lord and his saints never can we suffer anything for him in comparison with that which he has suffered for us this is the motive which made the saints receive the affronts calumnies and opprobriums that the world heaped on them as an extreme favor and a singular honor hence they gloried in their crucifix and in the annihilation of themselves having more content joy glory and felicity on the throne of the cross than ever solomon had on his throne of ivory and their love was so strong and so powerful that the waters of tribulation and rivers of persecution could not extinguish it the virtues that spring up in the midst of prosperity are usually slender and weak and those that grow in the midst of adversity are strong and robust just as we see that the best vines grow among stones i beg of god that he may be always in the midst of your heart that it may not be moved by every wind and that giving you a share of his cross he may communicate to you his holy patience and divine love 
which render tribulations so precious. Keep a holy silence, for truly it is good to spare our words for God and for his glory. God has held you by his good hand in your affliction. But moreover, dear daughter, we must act thus always. My God, said St. Gregory to an afflicted bishop, how is it possible that our hearts, which have been elevated to heaven, can ever be disturbed by the occurrences of earth? This was well said. The very sight of our dear Jesus crucified can sweeten in one moment all the sorrows, which are only flowers in comparison with his thorns. And since our grand rendezvous is eternity, what is the value of anything that passes with time? Consider that this mortal life is full of trials to which everyone is subject, that consolations are rare and labors innumerable, and therefore that we are in a state in which we must expect more of the bread of bitterness than honey, with the assurance, nevertheless, that he for whom we suffer and for whom we have resolved to nourish holy patience in the midst of opposition will in due season bestow on us the consolations of his holy spirit changing the nails and thorns of contradiction into a collection of precious pearls for eternity and giving at the same time a new lustre and splendour to our charity we are told of a fire which wonderfully burns in water in like manner holy charity is so strong that it nourishes its flames amid the waters of adversity let us represent to ourselves the crown of heaven which is not given without victory and victory which is not given without war we shall then regard the combat of tribulation as agreeable ah if we lifted up our eyes to heaven we should see that not one of the mortals who are now immortal there arrived in it by any other way than that of continual trouble and affliction. Why then do we complain of the little difficulties which God sends us, and fail in patience for a trifle, when the smallest drop of humility would suffice to make us support patiently that which happens to us justly for our sins? When he places before our eyes some pains, labors, and dangers, to which we are of necessity compelled to submit, let us immolate ourselves in spirit to the good pleasure of God, and tenderly kiss this cross, remembering the general consolation that is to be found in almost all the evils of this life, namely, the hope that they will not be permanent, and that we shall soon see their end. Then, let us cry out from the depth of our heart, in imitation of St. Andrew, We hail thee, O precious cross, we hail thee, O blessed tribulation, how amiable thou art, O holy affliction, descended from the amiable bosom of the Father of eternal mercy, and destined for us from all eternity the only cure for most of our maladies and infirmities whether corporal or spiritual is patience and conformity to the will of god resigning ourselves to his good pleasure without reserve or exception in health in sickness in contempt in honour in consolation in desolation in time and in eternity willingly accepting every trouble both of mind and body from his most amiable hand as if we saw it present even offering ourselves to endure more if it should seem good to him no one can tell how pure and meritorious such an acceptance of the divine will renders our sufferings when we not only receive them with meekness and patience but cherish them love them and caress them on account of the divine good pleasure from which they proceed as a branch of agnus castus drives away weariness from the traveller who carries it so the cross the mortification the yoke the law of the saviour 
who is the true chaste lamb is a burden which refreshes solaces and recreates those hearts that love his divine majesty there is no labor in that which is loved or if there be labor it is a beloved labor labor blended with holy love is a kind of bitter-sweet more agreeable to the taste than pure sweetness are you aware of what shepherds in arabia do when they perceive the approach of thunder and lightning they retire under the laurel trees both themselves and their flocks when we observe that some persecutions and contradictions threaten us with some great annoyance we must take shelter both we and our afflictions under the holy cross by a true confidence that will turn to the good of those who love god keep up your heart then remove anxieties often cast your confidence on the providence of our lord and be assured that heaven and earth will sooner pass away than that our lord will fail to protect you so long as you are his obedient child or at least desirous to be so two or three times a day examine whether your heart is not disquieted about something and finding that it is endeavor upon the spot to reinstate it in repose chapter twenty three the cross of the good thief solomon says that all that passes under the sun is vanity and affliction of spirit there is no man under the sun who can avoid the cross and sufferings but the wicked sinners are contrary to their liking and in spite of their will fastened to the cross and to tribulations and by their impatience render their crosses hurtful they have sentiments of esteem for themselves like those of the bad thief by this means they unite their crosses with that of this wicked man and infallibly their reward will be the same the good thief transformed a bad cross into a cross of jesus christ certainly the fatigues the injuries the tribulations that we receive are thieves crosses and we have well deserved them we ought then to say humbly with the good thief we receive in our sufferings that which we have deserved by our sins it is thus we shall by our humility render our thief's cross the cross of a true christian let us then like the good thief unite our sinner's cross with the cross of him who has saved us and by this loving and devout union of our sufferings with the sufferings and cross of jesus christ we shall enter like so many good thieves into his friendship and company in paradise chapter twenty four the crosses of providence are the most agreeable to god if any one will come after me says our lord let him take up his cross and follow me to take up one's cross cannot mean anything else than that we should receive and suffer all the pains contradictions afflictions and mortifications that happen to us in this life without any exception with an entire submission and indifference let us often immolate our heart to the love of jesus even on the altar of the cross where he immolated his for the love of us the cross is the royal gate by which we enter into the temple of sanctity he who seeks for it elsewhere will not find a trace of it the best crosses are the weightiest and the weightiest are those which we receive most reluctantly according to the inferior portion of the soul the crosses we meet with in the street are excellent and still more those we find in the house and in proportion as they are more teasing they are better they are of much greater value than disciplines fasts and everything else that austerity has invented here indeed appears the generosity of the children of the cross and of the inhabitants of the sacred mount of calvary 
the crosses we impose on ourselves are always put on in a mincing kind of way because they are our own and therefore they are less meritorious humble yourself and receive those joyfully that are imposed on you without your selection the length of the cross much increases its value be faithful unto death and you shall have the crown of life you are fond of the crucifix what then would you wish to be unless crucified our lord gave david his choice of the rod with which he should be scourged and god be praised but it appears to me that i would not have chosen i would have left it all to his divine majesty the more a cross is from god the more we ought to love it let us receive with love the crosses that we have not chosen that god gives us from his hand let us bless them let us love them they are all perfumed with the excellent odor of the place from which they come where there is less of our own choice there is more of the good pleasure of god i infinitely prefer the evil that comes to us from our heavenly father before that which comes to us from our own will our lord has well shown us that it is not necessary we should choose our crosses but that it is necessary we should take and carry such as are presented to us for when he was about to die in order to redeem us and satisfy the will of his heavenly father he did not choose his cross but humbly received that which the jews had prepared for him i particularly love the evil that the sole choice of our heavenly father sends us and much prefer it to that which we might select ourselves behold true virtue and how it ought to be practised seneca showed it a long time ago in a beautiful expression i wish it were saint augustine who had uttered the words the perfection of man consists in suffering all things well as if they happened to him of his own choice to suffer for god is to fill our hands with the purest and most precious gold wherewith to purchase heaven a single package if i may so speak of this divine gold suffices to put us in possession of the glory of paradise a moment of light tribulation says st paul worketh for us an immense weight of glory the same observation hardly applies to our ordinary actions we may say that the most virtuous compared with afflictions are only common money a gross metal a great deal of such is required to procure anything of value and it often happens that such money is counterfeit because in most of our good works our self-love enters and alters their purity christian perfection consists in suffering well to acquire solid virtues complain not of your pains endure contradictions patiently god gives you an occasion of practicing patience would you wish to let it escape perhaps in your life you will never meet the like of it again perhaps it may be the last service you will render to his divine majesty be constant and he will bless you in your affliction let us love our crosses seen with the eyes of love they are all of gold and though our lord is dead there in the midst of nails and thorns there is found in the cross a collection of precious pearls that will compose our crown of glory if we courageously carry our crown of thorns the time of afflictions and contradictions is the beautiful harvest time when the soul gathers in the richest benedictions of heaven one day then is more profitable than six at another time let us therefore be always fastened to the cross and let a hundred thousand arrows transpierce our flesh provided the inflamed dart of the love of god has previously penetrated our hearts and let this divine wound make us die of its holy death which is more precious than a thousand lives 
in what can we testify our love towards him who suffered so much for us if not in the midst of contradictions repugnances and aversions let us cast ourselves upon the thorns of difficulties let us allow our heart to be transfixed with the lance of contradictions let us drink the vinegar and gall of temporal afflictions since our sweet saviour wishes it to be so as the flowers grow among thorns so divine love increases better in the midst of tribulation than in the midst of comfort oh how happy are the souls that to acquire love drink courageously the chalice of sufferings with our lord mortify themselves carry their cross and suffer and receive willingly from his divine hand every kind of occurrence with submission to his good pleasure but my god how few there are who do these things as they ought we meet often enough with souls who desire to suffer and to carry the cross and i know there are some who even ask afflictions from god but it is on condition that he will frequently visit and console them in their pains and sufferings and that he will show them he is much pleased with their sufferings and intends to reward them with eternal glory there are also many who desire like the two disciples to know the degree of glory they shall have in heaven certainly this desire is rather impertinent for we should never in any manner inquire into that but occupy ourselves always in serving his divine majesty as faithfully as we can observing his divine commandments his counsels and his wishes most exactly and with as much perfection purity and love as will be possible for us leaving the care of the rest to his infinite goodness who will not fail if we do our duty to reward us with immortal and incomprehensible glory by giving himself to us so much account does he make of what we do for him in a word he is a good master we must endeavor to be good and faithful servants to him and he will not fail to be a faithful remunerator oh if we knew what a happiness it is to faithfully serve the divine saviour of our souls and to drink of his chalice with him oh how willingly we would embrace pains and sufferings after the example of the great saint catherine of siena who preferred the crown of thorns to that of gold thus we ought to act for in fine the way of the cross and of affliction is a secure way and one that leads us straight to god and to the perfection of his love if we are faithful to drink courageously of his chalice crucifying ourselves with him in this life his divine goodness will not fail to glorify us eternally in the next end of book two chapter twenty four